Hello everyone. In this class, we'll be going over many topics including counting and probability, number theory, algebra, and geometry. These are many topics that are really useful for the AMCA and they come up very often. Today we'll be going over counting probability, specifically permutations and combinations. Let's start off with today. But can you all see my screen? Okay, and you can hear me right too, right? Okay, so then we'll get started today. So let's start with the first problem. If you, example one. If you have Alice, Betty, and Chase, and you need to choose two of them to be the president and vice president of the math club, how many ways are there to do this? So how do we approach this problem? One way is just to list all of them out. So as you can see here, I've listed all of them out. So we have to do based on the different people who can become president and the vice president. So if Alice is the president, then we can have either Betty be the vice president or Chase be the vice president. On the other hand, if Betty is the president, then either Alice or Chase can be the vice president. But then if Chase is the president, we can have either Alice or Betty be the vice president. So as you can see here, there are six total ways that this will work. But how can you do this without listing all of them out? So let's consider all three people to be A, B, and C. So for the president, we have three choices. It can be any one of them. It can be any one of A, B, or C, because the president can be anybody. So there are three choices for who can be the president. Then for the vice president, it can be any, any of the people who are not already chosen for the president. So let's say the president was chosen as Betty then we can cross out Betty, because Betty can no longer be the vice president as well. Therefore, there are two choices for the vice president, because it can be anyone of A or C, now that they're the ones who are not chosen as the president. Therefore, there are six ways to choose the president and vice president from three people. And as you can see, this is the same answer that we got when we just listed all the possibilities out. So do any of you have any questions about this problem? You can put them in the chat if you have any questions. Okay, then I'll move on to the next problem. So just like the first example, this is a very similar problem. Find the number of ways of selecting a vice president, president and secretary from a group of eight people. So what is it? Let's first think about, let's let the people be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So these are the eight people that we have. And just like the last example, the president can be any one of these people. So there are eight choices for who can be the president of the club. And now let's say to say that six was the president that was chosen. Now we only have seven people left. So we have only seven choices for who we can choose as the vice president of the club. Now, let's say we cross out one more person. Let's say the vice president was, let's say the vice president was three. For example, now there are only six people left, one, two, four, five, seven, and eight. So then we can only have six choices for who is the secretary of the club. Therefore, there are only eight times seven times six ways to choose the president, vice president, and secretary from the group of eight people. And this is just 336 if you multiply it out. So this is the final answer for this problem.
Do any of you have any questions on this problem? You can put them in the chat if you do. Okay, now I'll move on to the third example. So find a number of three digit numbers with all of its digits distinct. So a three digit number has three different digits. Let's draw out each of the three digits that we have. So of course, the three digit, each of the digits can be anything from zero to nine, except the first digit. So the first digit can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Note that the first digit cannot be zero. Since if the first digit of a three digit number was zero, it would no longer be a three digit number and would be a two digit number. So the digits in this place can only be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So therefore we have nine choices for this digit. Let's just say this digit was, for example, five. Now, now we move on to the next digit. And notice here that the problem says, find the number of three digit numbers that have all of its digits are distinct. And basically what distinct means is they ha all have to be different. So for example, one, two, three would be a valid number, but one, one, two wouldn't because these two digits right here, as you can see here, these two digits are the same. So that's not allowed because we want all the digits to be distinct or different. So as you can see here, if this was a five, this can be anything but a five. So this can be zero, one, two, three, or four, but then it can't be a five because all, already the first digit is a five. So it can be six, seven, eight, or nine. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine choices for this, this place. Now for the final digit. Now we've already, let's just say this digit right here was a four, for example. Now these two digits are different, so that's good so far. And now this remaining digit, again, can be anything from zero to nine, excluding five and four. Zero, one, two, three, four. We can't have a four, so not four or five. We can have a six, seven, eight, or nine. So there are, so there are eight choices in this case. And this, let's say it's a three. So then 543 would be a valid number. So just to summarize, the first digit cannot be zero, of course. So then it can be anything from one to nine, and there's nine choices for that. Second digit can be anything from zero to nine. For example, of course it can be zero. 106 would be a valid number because the second digit could be zero. So, but it can't be the number that was in the first digit. So then you subtract one from 10 because there's 10 digits from zero to nine. So there are only gonna be nine choices for the second digit. And for the final digit, we can't have the same number as any of these two digits. So therefore, it has to be any number from zero to nine besides the ones that we chose in the previous two digits. There are eight choices for this. And if we multiply this out, we get that there are 648 ways, number three and three digit numbers with all of its digits distinct. Okay, so do you all get, do you want to, if you have any questions, you can either um, unmute yourself or you can put them in the chat. Make sure you understand how to solve this problem because the, pro the problems we're gonna do from now on are gonna involve the concepts that we use that we learned here. Okay, I will move on then. So let's introduce factorials. Basically a factorial is a number multiplied by all the numbers less than it. So n factorial would be n times n minus one times n minus two, so on, all the way till times one. And even though this may seem confusing at first, it really is very simple. For example, four factorial is just four times three times two times one, which is 24. And for another example is three factorial, which would just be three times two times one, which is equal to six. So in the chat, in the chat, 
put what you think the value of phi factorial is. Yes, it is 120. Phi factorial is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. So here's some other common factorials you might want to memorize. Zero factorial is 1. And I know this might seem strange at first, but it's an exception to the factorial, so you might just want to memorize this. And again, 1 factorial is obviously 1. 2 factorial will be 2 times 1 factorial, which is 2. 3 factorial will be 3 times the value of 2 factorial, which is going to be 6. And 4 factorial, as we calculated here, is going to be 4 times the value of 3 factorial, which is 24. And 5 factorial is 120. And 6 factorial will just be 6 times the value of 5 factorial. So it will be 720. So now let's try an example. Find the number of ways to arrange 5 different books on a bookshelf. So let's start with the, each of the values. So for the, let's just say we have five slots. One, two, three, four, five. And let's say our five books are A, B, C, D, and E. So these are our five books. So how many choices do we have for the first slot? Well, it can be any one of A through E. So there's going to be just five choices for this. Now, let's just say that A was the first book that we kept here. Now we have four choices left. So we have four choices for the book that can be in the second slot. So there's just going to be four choices for this. Because now we cannot have the same, we cannot have the same book in the first and second slot, of course. And now for the, for the third slot, you can't have any of the other preceding books. So let's just say that C was the one that we used for the second slot. So this would be A, this was C. So now for this third slot, we can't have A or C. So we only have B, D, or E remaining. So there are three choices for this. And now for the final, for the final two slots, for, the, for this fourth slot here, let's just say that this value over here was B. So then we cross out B because we can't use it anymore. So we only have two choices for this second book here. So there's two choices for that. So now let's just say this value is E, let's just say. So we can cross that out. And now for this final slot here, for this final slot here, we only have one choice because there's only one book left. And this will, of course, be D. So therefore, it just the number of ways to arrange five different books on a bull shelf is just five times four times three times two times one. And if you notice, this is exactly the value of 5 factorial. So therefore, this is just going to be equal to 5 factorial, which if you memorize this above, it's just going to be 120. OK, so do you all understand how you got 120 from this? Could you look at the number of ways, number of book choices for each of the five spots? OK, now let's move on to um, the next problem, which is a word arrangement problem. So I'm going to give you a minute or two to try and solve this problem on your own. Um, don't put it in the comment chat because then other people can see your answers. Just directly private message it to me. So how many ways are there to arrange letters of the word math? So I'll give you around 10 or so seconds to try and solve this. Okay, yes, the answer is 24. It looks like most of you got that. So this is very simple. There are just four letters, M, A, T, and H. So let's just say there are four slots in which we have to put the four letters in, because that's how we arrange the letters. There's just going to be four choices for the first book, three choices for the second book, because after we cross out one, then two choices for the third book, then one choice for the final book. And this is just 4 factorial, and it's 24, as a lot of you got. Now let's try a slightly harder example. How many ways are there to arrange the letters of the word Mississippi? So Mississippi has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 letters. So we have 11 factorial ways to arrange them. But then you might notice 
that these they have multiple re repeat letters. So essentially, add, they have four S's as you can see. So let's write them out in a fashion where we can see the duplicate. So we have MIT, M I S S I S S I P P I. So as you can see, there are four I's, four S's, and two P's. So does anybody know of what we can do to account that there are four I's? Note that we can just, if we were to do the four I's, we could just rearrange the four I's. So for example, in arrangement, if you had M, I, I, M, I, I, and then we had S, S, I, I, P, P, S, S, let's say, then having this I here and this I here is the same as having this I here and this I here. So we are over counting for this. Does anybody know how we can account for this? We can divide it by four for all of the I's. Not quite, because there are four factorial ways to arrange the I's, not just four. So we actually have to divide by four factorial ways. Because think about if you had like the I, let's say they're I1, I2, I3, and I4. So we can just essentially rearrange all of these in four factorial ways. So we divide by four factorial, as you can see here. And similarly, do you know what to do for the S's? Divide 11, multiply four factorial in the denominator by four factorial. Yeah, so we multiply by another four factorial here. And similarly for the P's, you can, yeah, sure, just speak, you can speak, or you can type in chat. Divide it by two factorial. Yeah, you can just divide by two factorial. And now all we have to do is evaluate this. And I'm not gonna do all the calculations because this is gonna be very tedious. So we can just leave our answer like this for now. So now let's move on to the general formula for the number of ways to arrange the letters of a word. So for basically the formula is n factorial over d1 factorial, d2 times d2 factorial, times d3 factorial, so on. And basically n is the number of objects to arrange or words, letters in the word, and as we were doing in the previous example, and D1, D2, D3 are the number of times each of the letters that occur more than one time here in the word. And I know this may seem a bit complicated at first, but we can just try and let's just use the formula on this example with pineapple. So pineapple, so we have, we list the letters of the word pineapple. So we see that there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters in the word. So by the formula here, n is equal to nine. So we just plug in that. Now we see that d1, d2, d3, those are the number of times each of the letters that occur more than one time appear in the word. So we must divide by that to account for the rearrangements of this word. So as you can see, there are three p's, two e's. So from our formula, we have this will be nine factorial over three factorial because there's three p's and two factorial because there are two e's. And I'm again, I'm not gonna simplify this because it's, it's just calculations that you can, I'm pretty sure you can do on your own. So the answer would just be this, whatever it evaluates to. And again, you can just evaluate nine factorial to be nine times eight times seven times six times so on. And three factorial, if you memorized it earlier, is six, and two factorial would just be two. So you just really just evaluate this. So now let's move on to permutations. Permutations is a number of ways of re re rearranging things when the order matters or is important. So let's try this example. How many ways are there to pick your favorite and second favorite book among five books? And as we saw in the previous, in the very few beginning examples, Let's just use a method where we have two books, the favorite and the second favorite. So this would be the favorite book, and this would be the second favorite book. So because there are any, it can be any one of the five books, there are going to be five choices for the favorite book. Then we have to cross out one because it can't be, you can't have the same book be the favorite and the second favorite. So then there are going to be four choices for the second favorite. Now let's look into the formula for assigning k distinct positions to n things. So basically the formula that we can apply to these types of problems. So the formula is 
P and K, and don't worry about this notation. It basically just means the number of ways of permuting, the number of ways to, it just basically means the number of ways to sign K to C conditions to N things. So if you want, you can ignore this for now, but it's just a notation that's used. So don't worry about this too much. Just rem remember that this is the formula and it's N factorial over N minus K factorial. So let's explain this formula with the same example here. So instead of doing this method, we can just, we can try using the formula to solve the same problem. So in this case, we have, since there are a total of five books, we have that N is equal to five. And how many distinct positions do we have? Well, the two positions that we have are the favorite and the second favorite book. So that means we have K is equal to two. So that means P of N comma K is gonna be equal to five factorial over five minus two factorial, which is equal to five factorial over three factorial, which is equal to five times four times three factorial. Notice that I just split the five factorial into five times four times three factorial, so it will cancel out with the denominator, and I'm not evaluating it because it will just cancel out over three factorial. These terms cancel, and we get an answer of 20, just like we got with this method. So both methods work, except this is just a formula for generally solving all these kinds of problems. So here's another problem. The, again, this notation just means, basically if you have six objects, you need to choose three positions, and similarly for seven and two. So I'll do the first example for you, and you guys can try the second one on your own. So the first example, so we just, this is a formula for you guys to refer to. And so P of N of K, so N is equal to six here, and K is equal to three. So this, this is going to be equal to 6 factorial over n minus k, and n is 6, k is 3, 6 minus 3 factorial, which is equal to 6 factorial over 3 factorial, which is equal to 720 over 6 or 120. And instead of doing this, we could have just also done 6, fact, six times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 3 factorial, which would just also be uh, 120 as well. And now here's another problem, evaluate P seven comma two. So I'm going to give about 30 or so seconds to try this problem on your own. And if you guys can see if you can do it. Okay, so here we know that n is equal to seven and k is equal to two. So now I'll just try plugging it into this formula over here. Okay, so I'm gonna write a couple more steps. So we have seven, it looks like both, uh, it looks like um, five or six people got it so far. So I'm gonna give one more hint for this problem. So we have seven factorial over seven minus two factorial, which is equal to seven factorial over five factorial. Now, this is very simple, just equal to seven times six times five factorial over five factorial. And these terms cancel, so we get an answer, 42, which is what, a many, uh, few of you got. So do you all understand how to do this? Okay, now let's try a very similar problem. And now let's apply the formula that we use to an actual problem. There are 10 students at the math contest. How many ways are there to select? The first, second, and third place winners.
So does anyone want to explain how they solve this problem? Yeah, sure. Okay, so first I know that there are 10 total students. So first I wrote 10 factorial. Okay, yeah. And then, oh. over, so that yeah, would continue. be the order of the fraction. Now I, now that, I know there are three places. So I would have to do 10 minus three, that's in parentheses, and I would have to find the factorial of that. I can simplify this to 10 factorial over seven factorial, which, and 10 factorial can also be written as 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial. And the seven factorial and the numerator and denominator both cancel out. So then I do 10 times nine times eight, which is 720. Yeah, so essentially this is just 10 P3. This is because we are choosing three positions for the 10 students. And as she said, this is just going to be 10 factorial over 10 minus three factorial, which is going to be 10 factorial over seven factorial, which is 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial over seven factorial. And these cancel, these terms cancel. So we get an answer of 720, which is correct. So now let's move on to combinations. Example 11, if you have Alice, Betty, Chase, and Dave, and you need to choose two of them to be the leaders of the math club, how many ways are there to do this? So we can just list them out again. So for, we can either have as leader one, Alice and Betty, or if the leader one is Alice, we can have Chase, or if it can have Betty, Chase, or Dave as leader two. If the leader one is Betty, you can have Alice, Chase, or David, or David as the leader two. And if you have Chase as a leader one, we can have Alice, Betty, or Dave as leader two. And if you have Dave as leader one, you can have Alice, Betty, or Chase as leader two. So do we notice that anything wrong here? We see that Alice and Betty, or Betty and Alice, these two cases, they're the same thing because there's no such thing as leader one or leader two, it's just that they're both leaders. So these two cases are the same thing. So if we flip Alice and Betty or Betty and Alice, we get the same exact configuration. So sweeping these two, these two people's places doesn't really make a difference. And the same, same thing for all the other cases. For Alice and Chase over here, this case over here will also be the same as Chase and Alice over here. And similarly, this case over here, Chase and Betty, is gonna be the same as Betty and Chase because the leader, being a leader one or leader two is the same thing. And similarly for all the cases, similarly for all the cases, we, we can just switch them up and it'll be the same thing. So therefore we have to divide by two from our total count. So as you can see, we have enumerated 12 ways here, except that each way is overcounted because each way is accounting for one person being leader one and the other person being leader two or having one person be leader two and the other person be leader one. So therefore, we have to divide by two from this. So we have 12 divided by two, which is equal to six. Now, how do we solve this problem without listing all the cases like this? Again, we have four choices for, to be, for whom to be the leader one, and three choices for whom to be leader two, but then we have to divide by two, because being leader one is the same thing as being leader two. So we can just swap them, swap their places. In doing so, we get an answer of six. But the correct way of thinking about this should actually be two factorial. And this is because there are two factorial ways to rearrange the people there. For example, if we had to choose three leaders instead of just two leaders, instead of being just three, it would be three factorial because there's three factorial ways to arrange those three people in the line. We could have, for example, if we had to choose three leaders, we could have ABC, for example, or we could have ACB, or we could have BAC, or BCA, or CAB, or CBA. All these combinations are the same, and there are three factorial ways to arrange these three people in the same order. So we would have to divide by three factorial instead of just two factorial. Now let's move on to the general formula for choosing objects. So the formula for choosing k objects from n objects, just n choose k. Also, this notation here is just like the p notation. And this notation is very common, so you just should just memorize how to, like this is this is how you just write it in a um, in a parent in a big parentheses you just write n on top and k on the bottom and that basically just means n choose k so basically the formula is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial 
So, and also let's evaluate H is four just to give you an example of how to do this. So H is four would be eight factorial over four factorial times eight minus four factorial from just from the formula because we have N is equal to eight right here and K is equal to four. So we just plug in K here, plug in N here and here and then we just get that it's equal to this expression which is going to be equal to eight factorial over four factorial times four factorial. And we can rewrite this as eight times seven times six times five over four factorial times four factorial here and four factorial, and these will just cancel out. And this is going to be equal to eight times seven times six times five for 24. And these two terms have a product of 48, so we can cancel these out and get two here. And this product and this has a product of 70. 70 would be the answer to eight choose four. So eight choose four is equal to 70. And you also might notice that n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. Oh, shit. Is equal to n choose n minus k. And from the formula, this is because that if we have k factorial, just to give an example, I'll use six, n is equal to six, and k is equal to two. So we have six choose two, and this is going to be equal to six factorial over two factorial times six minus four factorial. And then we have six choose four, which is going to be six factorial over four factorial times six minus four factorial. And this is also equal to six factorial. And as you can see that um, this is gonna be six factorial, it should be two more factorial, sorry. Six factorial over four factorial times two factorial. This is going to be six factorial over two factorial times four factorial. And these are just gonna be equal. And the, Combinatorial explanation for this is that the reason is this because we can just choose k things to be part to be chosen, or we can also choose n minus k things not to be chosen. So, for example, if we had six balls and we had to choose two of them, it would be the same as choosing four of them not to be selected. So, therefore, this is the same thing. And in general, distinguishing between combinations and permutations can be tricky. So the words permute, order does not matter. In other words, imply a permutation. But then the words choose, select, order does not matter. These typically means combinations. So I've already gone over eight choose four. Try to figure out the value of nine choose seven on your own. Um, can you move up so that, yeah, thanks. We can see the formula. Oh, what is the formula? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So here's a hint. In the formula, we have n is equal to 9, k is equal to 7. So now try plugging it into the formula. Okay, now we're gonna move on. So we have that nine to seven is equal to nine factorial over seven factorial times nine minus seven factorial, which is equal to nine factorial over seven factorial times two factorial, 
which is equal to nine times eight times seven factorial over two, seven factorial times two factorial. And these seven factorials will just cancel out. You have this equal to nine times eight divided by two factorial, which is 36. Okay, now we're gonna move on to another example that involves choosing. So how many ways are there to select three fruits amongst eight different fruits? I'm gonna give you about 30 or 40, 30 ish seconds to work on this problem. And again, this is just be a, just an application of choosing. So try to use a formula for choosing on this problem again. Okay, so here's a hint. Because we have to choose three different fruits from eight fruits, all we have to do is evaluate the value of eight choose three. Okay, I'm gonna move on now. So in this formula, we have n is equal to eight and k is equal to three. So this is equal to eight factorial over a five, three, five, three factorial, three factorial times eight minus three factorial, which is equal to eight factorial over three factorial times five factorial, which is eight times seven times six times five factorial, over three factorial times five factorial. And these factorials cancel out. So we have eight times seven times six divided by six, which is equal to 56. So now let's try some, some slightly harder problems. How many three digit numbers are there with all the digits odd? So basically we can have any number for each of the three digits it can be one, three, five, seven, or nine, because all the digits have to be odd. So there are gonna be five choices for this spot. And same thing for the, this spot. It can be one, three, five, seven, or nine. So there's gonna be five choices. And similarly here, five choices. So this is a product of 125, which is our final answer. And now let's try a very similar problem. How many three digit numbers are there with all of the digits even? So try to solve this problem on your own and see if you can do it. So again, just try three things and make sure to be careful. All the digits have to be even. Okay, so I think a lot, um, few of you got it now. So here's a very classic narrative problem. They just think there are five choices for the first digit, five for the second, and five for the third, just like we did above. Except there's one thing that you're missing here if you do this. The first digit can be zero, two, four, six, or eight, but it can't be zero because if it's zero, then it's a two digit number. So instead, it actually is only four things that can work. Because zero does not work because zero cannot be the start of a two digit number. So there are four choices for this. So we can multiply this out and we get that four times five times five is equal to 100, which is the answer here. Make sure to remember that zero cannot be the beginning of a number. And yeah, in fact, it's not the same answer as the odd case. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to this problem. This is a slightly, a slightly tr more tricky problem. 
So how many three digit numbers are there with odd numbers are there with all distinct digits? So again, let's try the same method that we've been using for the previous problems. This first number can be anything from one to nine. So there are nine choices for this. But now the second number cannot be the same. It can be anything from zero to nine, except the one that's already here. So if you choose six, for example, it can't be six. So there are only nine choices for this. And now we see that this third digit. So this third digit has to be odd, but we can't use any of the numbers already used. But we see that we don't know how many odd numbers we already used. This could be six, for example, and this could be four, or this could be five and three. And in each of these different cases, we could get different number of digits that actually work for this third value. So this might be a little bit more tricky, and we could have to use case work, which we'll discuss next week. But instead, there's a much simpler way that we can go about this. Instead of starting from the beginning, let's try starting at the end instead. So for this last digit, it can be anything one, three, five, seven, or nine. So there are going to be five choices for this digit. And let's just say we choose three, for example, so we know three is used. And now we can go back to the middle digit, or we can go back to the first digit, which is probably better. So for this first digit, we can have either um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And since three is already used, we can have three. So you have eight choices for this digit. And now for this final digit, there are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But we can't have, we, we, let's just say we select um, four for this case and three. We cannot have four or three. So there are going to be eight choices for this. This actually has a product of 320. So in general, for most counting problems in which you have to multiply for each of the values, it's generally best to deal with the most restrictive conditions first. So for example, this condition would be the most restrictive because we can only have one, three, five, seven, or nine. But then this digit would be the second most restrictive because we cannot have zero. And this digit with this digit right here, this would be the least restrictive because we cannot have, because we can have any digit from zero to nine. So it's always best to deal with the most restrictive cases first and the least restrictive cases last. So that makes it easier for us. And as we saw, it would be a lot harder if we actually started with the, this digit first, because then we'd run into some issues of having different cases. So do you have, if you have any, uh, do, you, do you have any questions about this problem? Okay, so now I'm going to move on to this next problem. So just like the word problems that we've been dealing with earlier, except it's slightly different. How many ways are there to misspell the word? misspelled. So I'm just going to write it out in a pattern where you can see the duplicates. Miss. So here we can see that there are one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten letters in the word. So we have ten factorial on top. And now on the bottom, what do we put? So try to finish this problem on your own. You don't have to, it's okay if you don't simplify your answer for now. If you can just leave in terms of factorials or whatever you have. So 
Do, does anybody want to know, you want to say how we can proceed? So of course, we can divide by the duplicates of letters. So what do we divide for the S's? Just put it in the chat. Um, can I say how do we proceed? You can put it in the common chat now, for now, because. Yeah, so it is two factorial for the S's. Now, does anyone want to tell me how, what we can divide for the E's? Yes, we can divide by two factorial again. And same thing for the L's. And of course, this is, and many people actually missed this in the first try, but they just thought this was the answer right here. But then if you reread the problem closely, it asks for the number of ways to misspell the word misspelled. So this actual original permutation itself does not work. So we actually have to subtract one. And this is because if you have the same exact thing, you're not misspelling it, it's still correct. So actually the answer would be this and not just, not just this part right here. So it's gonna be this whole thing combined. Make sure not to miss this as this is one of the, one of the main mistakes that is very common on this type, these types of problems. Because if you have the same letters again, and that's not considered as misspelled, it's still a correctly spelled word. And in order to misspell the word, this word, it needs to be different permutations from this one right here. Okay, so I'm going to move on to a problem from the 2018 AMC 8. Professor Chang has nine different language books lined up on a bookshelf, two Arabic, three German, and four Spanish. How many ways are there to arrange the nine books on the shelf, keeping the Arabic books together and keeping the Spanish books together? So you have nine books, Just let the two Arabic books be A1 and A2. And again, remember the two, there are two Arabic books, that doesn't mean they're the same book. So we let them be A1 and A2. And the three German books be G1, G1, G2, and G3. And the four Spanish books, well, they can be S1, S2, and S3. So it says, how many ways are there to arrange nine books, keeping the Arabic books together and the Spanish books together? So based on our conditions, we have to keep these books together and these books together. So let them just be one whole mass like this. Since the enemies have to be together, so let's just make this called, um, let's call this big A, let's call this lowercase a, and it has all the Arabic books in it. And let's call this um, lowercase s. It just, I'm just using symbols to denote the whole group of, I'm just using symbols to denote the whole group of, uh, oh, sorry, there's, there's actually four Spanish books. So there's gonna be four Spanish books. So there's gonna be, um, all these books are donated by lowercase s. So it's gonna be the whole group of books. And these German books, you can just keep them in the original form since there's no conditions in the problem saying we have to keep them together. So they're just G1, G2, G, and G3. So the number of ways to arrange all five of these objects is just going to be five factorial because there are five objects and we need to arrange them in a line. And then we must divide, we must also multiply the number of ways to arrange each of these books inside each of these, um, so we, each of these groups you called an A and S. So we have to find the number of ways of arranging the books inside these groups. So the number of ways of arranging them inside this group would just be two factorial. And the number of ways of arranging them inside this group would just be four factorial. So you can multiply this out and we get that the answer would be 120 times two times 24 to give an answer of 5760. And this is a little bit of a tricky problem because we have to take care of two cases. Number one, we have to group them all together. We have to group all these books together right here. And we also have to group the, we also have to group the Arabic books together here. So, and then we have to order each of the things inside each of these groups. And then if you multiply them all together, we get this answer of 5760. Now let's try. Now, um, since we have a little bit of extra time, I'll go over number five of this homework, number five of the homework problems. So a special type of license plate includes three distinct letters at the beginning and four single digit numbers after. So how many such license plates exist? So try, go ahead and try this problem. And it's very similar to the problems that we've already been doing. And if you want, you can use a calculator or just leave your answer in unsimplified. 
for this problem here. So I'll just go ahead and draw in the beginning here, three distinct letters and four numbers. This is blue as the letters and the as numbers. And of course you can have, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. And yeah, so try, try doing this problem Yeah, okay, just, just to be clear, this is the problem that we're doing right here. Number Muted. So for this first for this first letter here, there are going to be 26 choices. And for the second letter here, there are going to be 25 choices because we've already used one letter. And now for this final choice here, there are going to be 24 choices because you can't have any of the two previous letters. We cannot have K or L. So there's going to be 24 choices for that. And the single digit numbers, that's very straightforward. For the single digit numbers, there are just going to be 10 choices for each of them. And that's just because there can be any number from 0 to 9. And those are just 10 numbers. And same thing for all four of these choices. And when we multiply it out, we multiply 26 times 25 times 24 times 10 to the power of 4. We get that the answer is um, 156. One five six and followed. That's followed by six zeros. And yeah, you can use a calculator for this because if you want to, or you can yeah, you don't have to actually evaluate this if you don't want to. And you get the answer that's one fifty six followed by six zeros. And that's the answer for this problem. And if you want, you could have just left it in this form because it's okay for now. Okay, everyone, th thank you for coming to this class and. I will send you the, the five homework prompts that you have for this week and try to do them best and also send a submission form where you can submit your answers to all of these problems. Okay, bye.